Early warning systems provide schools with a proactive tool to help identify and support struggling students. Real-time student data, such as attendance, behavior, and course performance, provide the foundation for these systems. Teams use other data that they are already collecting, such as special education status or test and homework scores, to figure out the most appropriate interventions for students. For an early warning system to have a positive impact, school teams need a reliable set of protocols to run their meetings and efficiently discuss solutions for identified students. This video helps answer some commonly asked questions by early warning system teams, such as, how can an early warning system team discuss several students within a one-hour meeting? How does a team discuss the complexity of why a student might be struggling without taking up too much time with anecdotal stories? While the specifics vary, the New Mexico Public Department of Education, the High Plains Regional Education Cooperative, the Everyone Graduate Center, and the John Hopkins School of Education have developed a brief protocol for how to discuss why a student is struggling and identify an appropriate intervention in about 10 minutes. This protocol includes the following steps. First, identify the student. Next, the team shares information about why the student is struggling. Finally, the team discusses intervention options. Let's look at St. Ignatius High School and how their team uses this protocol. The St. Ignatius team has integrated their early warning system data into existing response to intervention and Montana Behavioral Initiative team meetings. We do a 20-day referral. So at 20 days into the school year, staff make a referral for at-risk kids. And they say, this kid is struggling, this kid is having a tough time. Here's, here's what I've noticed, right? And then they recommend interventions themselves. We trust that teachers know their students the best and what's gonna help them. And so at the meetings, when we're talking about a kid, we have what the teacher recommended for the student. Um, we have the early warning system data percentage, likelihood of dropping out. We have our pyramid of interventions and we have our team there to discuss. We also invite um, parents and then that teacher that serves as a mentor for that student into those meetings. The team members in this meeting, shown from left to right, have the following roles. Teacher liaison, recorder of interventions, parent contact, principal who provides information and manages updates to the student's plan, timekeeper, and student liaison. Some team members also serve as student mentors. Here's the protocol in action. Notice the key practices that keep the meetings focused and on task. So I was noticing that <coughs> since school started, his EWS has gone up 8%. It has From gone. a 4 to a 12 in a month. Yeah. That's not good. Um, not having the, the sheet in front of me right now, I don't know what would cause that, but I'm guessing it's probably attendance. Mm -mm. Is it, do you He's have good. That? He's good. Today is the first day he's been gone. And normally he's terrible, but today is the first day, unless maybe the second, but because he's my age six period, mm -hmm. he's been here every day. Does he need yeah. in the afternoon a lot? Because mm -hmm. I have him eighth or seventh hour, and he's well football gone moderately. They were gone for that. Yeah. But. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. What do we What do we need here? What were their suggestions on his referral sheet? Yeah. So attendance good, one excuse absence, one tardy. Okay. Um, he's got zero discipline referrals. And grades, he's got a 93 in consumer math, an 88 in government, a 74 in leadership and communication, a 66 in English 12, um, a 61 in personal finance. And so he's, those two. he's got a SEMS lab and an aid period mm -hmm. and advisory with Ms. Young.
So his mentor said it's more, she feels it's more emotional than, not emotional, but like personal, personal, sorry, than anything else that's happening right now. She's already met with him a few times. That's what she Dealing with past, like things from last year, mm. as far as girls go and whatnot, that's coming back and that kind of stuff, so. Okay. I don't know. She's the mentor. His mentor is the one that made the referral to. Mm-hmm. Okay. So she recommended a SEMS class, which she already has. Um. <clears throat> Do his parents have any insights onto what might be going on? If it's more personal type of stuff? I'm... Well, and his mentor didn't say personal as in girl problems. She just said his biggest problem right now is personal things personal things so she didn't I just know that that's a big thing thing that's recently changed like within the last week yeah so um okay so So yeah there might be something going on at home I don't know he's in there <clears throat> during this period I'd say he probably utilizes about half that time really to where he's actually doing stuff to stay on top of it and then the other half he's just kind of and he's just recently started because the reason he's my aide is because he couldn't fit my class into his schedule oh, mm-hmm. so he's with my middle schooler so he's like playing with him and that we've just recently started working on stuff for the concert there's no reason that he couldn't be using that time for work so he's as well. In, he's in with you sixth period. Mm-hmm. And he has Sam's fifth, it sounds mm-hmm. like. During your eight period, what um, what can we do to support him? We have Sam's right before, too. Yeah, but when so he leaves there. <clears throat> so if he needs work with any teachers more than... I mean, more than welcome to do go and get help with that. I just feel like he would maybe goof around a little bit instead of actually doing that. So he could, I mean, we could check and see with her and him if he wanted to switch agent periods, if you were willing to well, let he, him trade. He has wanted to, was wanting to try to get into choir fifth period anyways. Mm. Um. So if he t- took a, if he did that and then took his SEMS sixth. sixth, but then if he ever needed like time, like as far as with me, like if he needed to not be in choir for a day, it's not like it would be the end of the world. So gotcha, a possible gotcha. schedule change. We'd be able to work more directly with him during sixth period because we've only got two other students in there. And with, six. and with fifth period, there's the middle school students that are in there also. Mm. <clears throat> so if it was just, if he swapped choir and the SEMS lab, I think that would be good for him. Especially because <clears throat> then if he's caught up, then he could come in sixth period mm-hmm. and, and do, play. Mm-hmm. So that might be a little motivation. Mm-hmm. Contact mom or dad for... Schedule change? No, just to see. Personal? Yeah, or just leave that for now. Um, no, I think one, no. So. We probably need to see if there's any. Maybe she bring them in. And probably. and his mentor may be able to shed light on that. Yeah. I mean, she may not have been comfortable putting that in an email to me. Yeah. We found success with the way that we run the meetings and the process that we use through trial and error. Um, it's it takes time, and it takes energy and you've got to you figure those things out as you go and so where we're at now is we've figured out what works and what doesn't work for us and then put these processes into place how the meeting runs and who's doing what is um, is the the culmination of you know three and a half years of meetings dealing with kids and what what works best and what doesn't and what we need to talk about and what we don't talk about. Um, So it's been an an evolving process. For more information on early warning systems and to download additional research and tools from REL Northwest, visit our website. Operated by Education Northwest, 
RAIL Northwest is one of the 10 regional educational laboratories funded by the U.S. Department of Education's Institute of Education Sciences.